Hi folks, Tom from Fan Dabby Dozy here with another video for the Highlander series. And as you know, I usually look at things to do with wilderness living skills, but today we're going to be looking at some martial culture. So I'm here joined by my buddy Owen. He's a martial arts enthusiast, and um, so you mainly do Chinese style stuff. Mm -hmm. Not so experienced with the Scottish things, but am I right in saying that, like me, you're hoping to explore our Scottish heritage? Um, so you have some some Scottish weapons with you, and mm -hmm. we'll be uh, exploring some of the basics. Yeah. Cool. So, what weapons have you got for us today, Owen? We've got uh, these red oak quarter staffs. Quarter staffs. Cool. Yep. So they're six feet, solid oak. Almost anyone out in the wilderness would have had a stick. I mean, it's invaluable for traveling. Mm. I mean, it helps you, aids you with walking. It's going to aid you with any wild animals that you would have encountered back in the day. The staffs are a big part in many cultures all around the world. I've got a whole video about my staff. You should check that out. Um, but I know from Donald McBain's book, he said the quarter staffs were like seven feet long. Mm -hmm. But that seems good for fighting, but if, you, if it's your everyday staff, I feel like... So this is six feet long. I'm yeah. quite a short guy. But if this was seven feet long, that's like not really practical for... Quite around the woods. seven yeah, feet. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so we got six feet long quarter staffs. To me, and that seems like a good thickness. Like you, quite heavy for hiking, but you could still use that for hiking, couldn't you? Yeah. So these are practice um, basket hilt swords. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. So um, I've read that... These were often made of ash, is that right? And then they had a, a leather basket or woven basket. Mm -hmm. So this is for practicing with the, the broadsword. It's good for going through the motions and yeah. practicing positioning and you know, because you want you want to get as perfect positioning as possible and train that into your muscle memory. Owen's rustled up some practice targes. They used to the Highlanders would make them out of cross boarded uh, hardwood and then leather backed. And they'd also put a lot of rivets. Yeah, I think it was brass rivets. Yeah, brass rivets. Um, really Sometimes they had a spike and stuff, didn't they? Yeah, um, removable as well. Removable. And we've got slightly, we've got one with the handles in the middle, and then this one, the handle is slightly further down, so that you could also hold the dirk in that hand. And we're also going to cover some Highland wrestling as well. Is that right? Yeah, um, the Highland wrestling style is called backhold. Um, but we're going to be looking at a combination of Irish elbow and uh, loose hold mixed with some Scottish back hold because it's somebody Ten more. so now we're gonna move on to checking out the targe as well now remember we're, we're both pretty much beginners at this even though he's got a lot of martial art experience it's all Chinese so <laughs> we're uh, we're pretty new to this but if uh, if you guys want to see more then we can uh, do some more videos in the future yes my limited knowledge of the targe is um, you know, if you're using it like this and you still have this portion of your arm exposed um, so what I've seen is people moving with the targe and sword at the same time so the idea is that you're constantly you're actually like covering your body and that forearm at the same time so Owen is going to be our red coat for this demonstration um, so Apparently during some of the battles prior to the Battle of Culloden, um, so a common way to go to battle, imagine this is a dirk, I would use my dirk but it's a bit short and it's also very sharp, 
Um, so I've just got a stick as a dirk. So it was one common way um, to fight is that you would hold the dirk in your targe hand in a dagger grip so that it's protruding at the bottom. You then have your uh, broadsword in your right hand. And um, basically after the, the British, the Redcoats had done their, their musket volleys, they would have had a, a bayonet in the end. And it was basically just used as a spear. And, um, but the common sort of counter-attack that the Jacobites were using is using the targe to get in, coming in with the dirk, and then they have all this side exposed um, so just using a very basic technique, let's run through it again. Then they were coming, sorry if I stabbed you. <laughs> the, they could break through the, the red coat lines fairly effectively. However, when it came to the um, Culloden, the, the red coats had learned a few lessons. And um, one of them was actually, rather than trying to stab the person directly in front of you, it's stabbing the person slightly to your right. So if I'm Jacobite coming towards you, parry away, coming in, but this whole side of me is exposed. So it might be fine for the person that I'm fighting right ahead, but for the person just to my right, then all this part of my body is exposed. So rather than aiming to the Jacobite in front of you, if, Owen, if I'm fighting the red coat to Owen's right, I'll be coming in like this, and then that's me dead. So that was one. Um, I must have taken some balls not to uh, to stop focusing on the guy that's charging at you and focusing the guy to see your right. Yeah, brass balls. So now on to the quarter staff. Um, now there's not a huge amount of historical records from Scotland. I think I talked about that in my staff video. Uh, there is a book by Donald McBain, the expert swordsman's handbook, and it's got a very um, it's got only got a few pages about the staff, but uh, there is from that um, German fencing guide from 16th century or something. Uh, the quarter staff's um, basic stance is like this. I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting. So hands kind of face forward like that. Basic strike to the side of the head. So coming up to the other side. Um, and then basic thrust from there, this way, either just coming forward like so, or it's sliding through your hands, or coming like that. Obviously they've got different um, pros and cons. That thrust you're still getting um, plenty of control, um, but not as much reach. With this thrust you're getting more reach, but less control. And then that one, you're obviously getting lots and lots of reach, but if someone deflects that, they could easily just fall out your hand. Then back. Okay, low. Yeah. Low. Alright. Alright. Oh, that was my knuckles, man. <laughs> From my martial arts training in my personal life, I, I learned uh, this short form called the Dragon Pole. It's uh, from Chinese martial arts. Now it's most certainly not European martial arts, um, nothing to do with Scotland. But um, a lot of the movements are very, they're very small, very easy to pick up, and um, I think there would have been a lot of um, applicable skills that we could transfer over. You can see the sort of advantage of having a, a staff or a spear there, as a, um, with other weapons, if you were wanted to cut to someone's head and someone's foot, there's quite big movement. You can see with just having leverage, just having something long, just a very small movement, you can cut someone's leg and then um, face just by a very small movement of the backhand. So um, yeah, even if it's not Scottish, then you can still see it applicable to every culture that uses staff. Okay, so what about hand-to-hand -hand combat? Um, so, again, there's not really a lot of historical um, resources on 
that sort of stuff. Highland Wrestling is a big thing and it's still played in Highland Games but it, um, it is very much a game but um, we can cover about where it may have come from. So you reckon Highland Wrestling may have originated from? The, the holds most certainly. Um, yeah. As you were coming to blows and mirror each other we open up here and we end up in this sort of position yep. where neither of us can actually use our weapons effectively and the, you know we've rendered the shields so ineffective. Pe people well. have come in so hard and fast that they've closed down so much Ended that... Ended up at a stalemate. Okay. And you're in this, you're, because you're in this cross position, you lose the weapons. Yeah. You're in that position. You end up here. So yeah. then all you do is clasp the hands together. Can you show that? In the back. And then you're in the, the back hold position. Okay. This is like a big hug. Pretty much. Yeah. So here's a couple of absolute Billy Basic throws for um, you guys have come in with their broadswords and targes. They've uh, they've closed in to their to their gaps, so their weapons are not actually useful anymore. So they're in some sort of position like this. Okay, so warriors so, are in. Come on, stay again. Looking to get the hip much closer this time. You actually place my hip on your body and then turn. So finally, we're going to use this stick as a training tool. So this is a Irish training tool, I believe, but um, could have come over to Scotland. Yeah, I think so. It, it's a bit ambiguous. Um, and we're just going to go assuming that it's Irish but again there's some shared culture between Ireland and Scotland so mm. I mean it doesn't matter that big of a deal. Commonalities for the, the Irish Gaelic and the Scottish Gaelic. Um, so you said this is a training tool for grip and maneuverability? Yeah like that? it's kind of like a, it's almost like sparring um, but you're it's primarily grip training. I suppose it's almost like a wrestling but it's just you're just is there any rules or it's just trying to get your opponent uh, off balance? Whoever whoever lets go of the stick loses. Whoever loses pretty easy, pretty simple. Let's go of the stick or falls over or something. Yeah, falling over, yeah. That, that okay. to. Cool. Anything goes though, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's like uh See, my hand try to fight over yeah. something. Technically, my, see, my hand slipped forward, so that yeah. that is me losing. Oh, really? Yeah, because your hand your hand has to stay. That's the same place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can feel it in your forearm. Yeah. But, I mean, it is training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one apiece. One more. <laughs> yeah, one more. You can really feel it in your forearm. So it is really training that kind of really strong grip that you probably need with any weapon really, okay. whether it's a sword, spear, just getting that rough and tussle kind of thing that you don't really get to train much. So it's really burning on your forearm. So you're getting some fun, but it's got a really a very important application. No one wants to lose their weapon in the middle of combat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my blister! <laughs> well done, sir. Is that 2-1? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, thanks so much for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll say this was absolute Billy Basics in some of the different Highlander martial arts. Neither of us are particularly experienced in it, but, you know, it's all about just getting out there, dressing up in your plaid, getting out in the woods and giving it a go. Or at least that's our attitude. Uh, but if you're if you're interested in this at all, then maybe in the future I can look more into different martial arts, Highlander martial arts, and look a bit more in depth. But this video is just a kind of general. But thanks very much, Owen, no bother. for coming along and uh, for making the training stuff. It's good fun. And uh, see you later, folks. Bye.